give God the glory, renown, and praise. Hallelujah. We stand on God's promises. We stand on God's word. God's word will never return to him void, but God's word accomplishes everything he sent it forth to accomplish in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Don't forget to wear your mask. Don't forget, hallelujah, to sanitize your hands. And don't forget to keep the distance. We have statistics on what's happening uh, all over the news, how the uh, pandemic is spreading and it uh, has gotten out of hand, but uh, God is still in control and we are trusting and believing God and God wants us to take precautions. The first precaution is uh, to uh, stand on God's promises. Uh, remember what the blood of Jesus Christ has done for us as believers and for as many as receive, to them gave you power to become sons and daughters of the Most High God. So we pray that you would acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior. And in this time of such stress and such confusion and such fear and such doubt, we pray that you will learn of him, Jesus. We pray that you allow the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and guide you through all the trials and tribulations and distress and the confusion and, and, and all the uh, hurt and challenges that you may be facing. Uh, God has put uh, a plan in place from the foundation of the world, and it was a plan uh, for us. But God had already, hallelujah, knew uh, without a doubt, praise be to God, uh, where the victory lies. And it's not in our medicine, it's not in our doctors, it's not in our education, hallelujah, it's not in these temporal things, for the things that are seen are temporal, and the things that are not seen are eternal, and the Bible says, set your affections on things which are above, and we have now began to uh, zero in on all the darkness that has been uh, compacting so many lives, I just got a phone call yesterday, one of my uh, childhood friends passed from the virus. Uh, we have relatives uh, every day. We hear somebody who has died, which we are familiar with, and uh, someone uh, of our loved ones, our friends, our neighbors, and just people in general. And I know that somebody that's listening to me now uh, has, has been affected in one way or another. Uh, either you had the virus, had the virus, or know someone who has died or is sick right now in the hospital with the virus, but God never changes. So we stand on his word and we stand on his promise. His word will not return to him void. His word will accomplish everything he sent it forth to accomplish. We're going to be reading out of Peter's, second Peter, and it's to exalt believers to stand true to the Christian suffering and set, uh, that set forth uh, the grace of God. And, and we pray that God uh, will speak to your heart, hallelujah, even as we are challenged uh, because this pandemic is hitting believers and non-believers alike, and we should have a different response as a believer, and we should allow our light to shine even in this dark time because it's our light, the light of the word of God, that's going to bring relief to our souls. Uh, as we go forth and as we read God's word and study God's word, um, we want you to remember that uh, God has not forgotten you. God has not given up on you. God is not trying to punish you. Praise be to God. God wants you to come into the full grace, hallelujah, that he has afforded us, his grace and his mercy and his peace. Hallelujah. And it belongs to as many as would receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's open up your Bibles to 2 Timothy. And I'm going to be reading out of the Amplified Version. And I'm going to also uh, be reading out of NIV because I, I want to get a, you to get a different understanding, but also have some clarity in what we're talking about. In 2 Peter, Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for simplicity. And we thank you for boldness in Jesus' name. There's anyone who's never given their heart over to Jesus Christ, we pray that you would give your life over to him now. Hallelujah. If you would just open up your, your mouth and believe in your heart, and Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus Christ with thy mouth 
and believe in our heart that he died and rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So with me, just say, Dear Heavenly Father, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross and rose from the dead. Hallelujah. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You died for me and you're coming back soon. And I will be ready in Jesus' name. Praise be to God. We want to be ready when he comes. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. So if you return to 2 Peter, and, and, and we, 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 this, is, this is written to strengthen believers, praise God, and, and to also stand in the truth of the gospel, of the good news, of the letters that were written to the believers. It says, uh, Simon Peter, 2 Peter 1, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours. Here, are, here, here, here Peter, uh, he addresses uh, the believers uh, by first uh, talking about how he's positioned uh, as he delivers the good news. As he delivered this epistle, he says, I'm a servant, I'm an apostle. Of Jesus Christ, he says, and to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith as precious as ours. How do we get it? It's through the blood of Jesus. It's through the righteousness, hallelujah, of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the only way we're in right standing. We're in right standing because of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're in right standing because of what the blood of Jesus Christ has done for you and me. Hallelujah. He shed his precious blood while we were yet in our sins. Hallelujah. It says grace and peace be yours in abundance. Boy, do we need God's grace and God's mercy. We blow it all the time. We mess up all the time. We, we're challenged all the time. Uh, we're struggling with different things. We are stressed. Hallelujah. We're hurting. We're sorrowful. And do we need peace? Do we need God's grace? Do we need God's mercy? Yes, we do. Hallelujah. We have been disobedient children before good parents, if you know what I mean. And because of God's love and his kindness, he has drawn us out of the well of darkness, out of confusion, out of doubt. He's brought us into the marvelous light. Hallelujah. That darkness cannot consume us. Hallelujah. In spite of ourselves. So we thank God. We praise him for his grace. We praise him for his mercy. Hallelujah. Some of you are struggling with, does God love me anymore? Some of you are thinking, I'm just suffering and I'm, I'm, I'm so stressful because of what I did or what I said or how bad I'm living. Jesus dealt with your sins. He dealt with them on Calvary. Hallelujah. So he says, grace and peace be. Hallelujah. Yours in abundance. It's, there's nothing you could do. Hallelujah. That could cloud out God's hallelujah, grace, mercy, and peace other than unbelief. If you choose to just not believe God and trust in God, hallelujah, then we got a little problem. Hallelujah. But God came with the remedy. He says, grace and peace be yours in abundance. Watch this. Through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 2. How? How do you get it? Through the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Thank God for education. Thank God that you are are, are, are well learned in a lot of areas, but do you know who Jesus is? Do you know the relationship of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Do you know these three are one? And do you know that God, the Father, sent the Son to die for us while we were yet sinners? God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus died, rose, hallelujah, but he then left us the Holy Spirit who now abides with us and lives with us. And if we acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior, he leads us, he guides us into all truth. Praise be to God. Through what? The knowledge of God, hallelujah, verse 2, through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Not through your education, hallelujah, 
but through the knowledge of God. You have to study God's word. You have to read God's word. You have to meditate on God's word. And the Holy Spirit begins to quicken you. Praise be to God. And when that happens, hallelujah, now you're conscious of God's grace, verse 2. You're conscious of God's peace, verse 2. You are conscious of the abundance of his grace and peace. How? Again, through what? The knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Is he Lord and Savior of your life? Hallelujah. Is he Lord and he's Savior of your life? He's Lord and Savior. He's the ruler. He rules and super rules over our life when we yield our hearts and minds to him. So we become obedient to truth. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And he is the light. But we got to be obedient to it. How do we do it? Through the knowledge, through reading God's word. Don't just hear the pastor. Don't hear the bishop. Don't hear the preacher tell you what thus saith the Lord. That's good that you do. But you need to know for yourself. Once you heard it from them, you need to now go back and read God's word. That, Abba, wants to speak to you personally. Hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're looking for peace, hallelujah. If you're looking for mercy, Hallelujah. It's in Christ Jesus. It's through Christ Jesus. It's by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, listen, Hallelujah. it is in him we live. It's in him we move and it's in him we have our being. Look at verse three. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Do you hear that? People struggling, talking about what do they need and what's going on and they just don't have any answers. Christ is the answer. Listen to what he says. He says, his, verse 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for what? For life and godliness. Now, how is it? Right. Circle this word. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory, and goodness. I'll read it again. Hallelujah. First, remember, let's go back. Let's go back. We talked about uh, to those who, this was written to those who, hallelujah, through the righteousness of God and Savior Jesus Christ has received, hallelujah, a faith as precious as ours. But then it says, how to come by grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord, not through the knowledge of your tradition, not through the knowledge of your lineage outside of Christ Jesus, but through the knowledge of God and Jesus, our Lord, his divine power has given us everything we need. How do you know this? Because it's through the knowledge of God. You've been reading God's word. You've been studying God's word. And the Holy Spirit has been speaking to your heart. Hallelujah. His divine power has given us Everything now, now this is the, this is where you gotta gravitate to this. This is where you gotta get into your spirit, because a lot of you are lacking, and and you're not just lacking because of finances. You're not just lacking because how do you don't have friends and families around you. You are lacking in your spiritual walk, in your spiritual life. Hallelujah! And you wonder why, with all the things you possess, and with all the things that you have, and all the education that you might have. Why is it so challenging for you to live from day to day in peace and in victory? Well, his divine power has given us everything we need. Is peace something we need? It is for life. It, 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 it's joy. Hallelujah. What we need it, it, it's sustenance, food, clothes, shelter. It, 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 is that a part of some of our needs? But it supersedes that because to tell you the truth, you really don't have to believe in God to you know draw a paycheck. People that I know get paychecks all the time. People I know have a lot of money in transportation and cars and houses and don't believe who Jesus is. So don't get it twisted into thinking that's how your, your primary reason for following Christ. No, the divine power has given us everything we need for, look at this, life. And what? Godliness. For life and godliness. Don't relegate life to things. Don't relegate life to what you have and what you possess because it's a point that a man wants to die in the judgment. And we came in here in this world naked and naked we shall return. Dust thou art and dust thou art to become. 
So he's not just talking about the, the, the temporal things. He says he's given us everything we need for life and godliness. Watch this. Through our knowledge of him, circle that, through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. I'll read it again. You can't skip this. You just can't skip. This is too much in it. We could stay here all day. Hallelujah. Pray. This is about making one's calling and election sure. Our calling, we want to make it sure. It says his divine power has given us everything. I want you to get this. We need. What is it that you need today? Need for what life? What kind of life? The Zoe life of God. The, the, the abundant life. He came that might we have life and have it more abundantly. What life is he talking about? The Zoe life of God. Z-O-E. The God life. Not just any anybody could apply themselves, especially in America. You can apply yourself, hallelujah, to, to your education and to networking abilities that you might have, hallelujah. And through inheritance, some people just receive it, an inheritance from their parents, their great-great-grandparents, and have little or no education. So that's not what exactly he's talking about here. He's talking about life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Verse 4, it says, through those he has given us his very great and precious promises. I, I, hear that? Through these, through what? Through the knowledge of him. He has given us his very great and precious promises. Verse 3, his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Verse 3, through these, he has what? Given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, huh? And watch this, circle this word, and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. You want to escape the corruption that's happening and all the things that God says he's given us a way of escape. He's given us, a, he's provided a way of escape. That's why I keep reading it over. I know you want me to move on, but I, I, I can't move on. Praise be to God, because God is telling you how to operate in victory, in the storm, in the pandemic, uh, with all the stress, with all the confusion, with all the doubt, with all the finance. People are hurting financially. People need, praise be to God, hallelujah, some finances right now. That I, I hear they're losing their homes. I, I, I hear and see uh, people struggling and struggling lying to eat. Look what it says. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. So, so it's not so much, again, uh, operating in victory and obtaining things, but it's a soulish thing. It's a spiritual thing that has to transcend these temporal things, when you begin to allow the spirit of man to connect with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he gives you a different perspective of what life is. And when you have a different perspective of what life is, you begin to walk by faith and not by sight. You begin to uh, recognize stress for what it is. Where is this stress coming for, from? And how does this stress, hallelujah, Try to keep me from standing on the promises of God. Watch, let, let's move on because they, they, they're telling me that I need to go ahead for it. So I will, in the name of Jesus. Uh, let's read for again. Through these, he has given us his great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the what? Divine nature. Huh? Hallelujah. And when you participate in the divine nature, look what you do. You escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, verse 5, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge 
and to knowledge, self-control. And self-control, perseverance. And to perseverance, godliness. Verse 7 says, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. Verse 8 says, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, watch this, they will keep you from being ineffective. You are, are you being ineffective today? Look at it. It says, it says, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, how, how about that? In increase, not increase, but in increasing, it's a continuous thing. In increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective. They will keep you from being unproductive in your knowledge of who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you suppose that these challenges are, are, are coming to us in such a way because we have not been productive in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? We haven't really learned of who he is. It says, in increasing measures, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9 says, but if anyone does not have them he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. It says, therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do, hallelujah, these things, you will never all. Verse 11 says, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before I shut down, praise be to God, we know that in Romans it tells us that for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. But so that through the endurance, hallelujah, taught in the scriptures and the endurance, hallelujah, hallelujah, encouragement, they provide, hallelujah, we might have what? Hope. Now, uh, uh, with the three minutes I have, the four minutes I have left, they say three minutes, praise be to God. Watch this. I want to read out of the NIV, uh, out of the uh, Amplified Version, but I want you to go back and read it. And I'm going to start at the fifth verse. Same thing I just wrote, just read. Same thing I just read, but a different version. It says in, 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 in 2 Peter uh, 1 and 5, it says, for this very reason, adding your diligence to the divine promise, all right? Let's go for It says, by means of these, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceeding great promises. This is out of the Amplified Version. So that through them you may escape by flight from the moral decay, rottenness, and corruption that is where? In the world because of covetousness, this is why the world is the way it is, because of lust and greed, and because, and become sharers or partakers of the divine nature. This is why. It says, in verse 3 says, for his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are, hallelujah, requisites and, 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 and suited for our lives. To life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellent virtue. By means of these, verse 4, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceeding great promises so that through them you may escape by flight from the moral decay, huh, rottenness and corruption that is where? In the world because of covetousness, because of lust, and because of greed, and become sharers or become partakers of the divine nature. We can become partakers of the divine nature for this reason, verse 5 says, adding your diligence to the divine promises, employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue, to develop excellence, resolutions, Christian energy and in exercising virtue, develop knowledge, develop intelligence. Verse 6 says, 
and in exercising knowledge, develop self-control. So what are you doing? You exercise. You know how you exercise? You're building up your muscles. You're building up your, your, your stamina. Well, exercise in your spiritual realm. Look what happens when you do that. It says that in exercising knowledge, you develop self-control. And in exercising self-control, you develop steadfast patience, endurance, and in exercising steadfastness, you develop godliness and piety. So as you exercise the truth of God, look what happens. Verse 7 says, and in exercising godliness, you develop brotherly affection. And in exercising brotherly affection, you develop Christian love. Look at verse 8. For as these qualities are yours and increasingly abound in you, you take ownership. They become you, a part of you. Why? Because you exercise yourself in love. You exercise yourself in development. You exercise yourself, praise be to God, in the faith. You exercise yourself in the promises and things of God. You keep it in your spirit. It's like you work out and do your exercise every day and go to the gym and praise be to God. God is telling you to exercise your faith. This is for these qualities are yours and increasingly abound in you. They will keep you from being idle or unfruitful until the full personal knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Verse 6, 9 says, For whoever lacks these qualities is blind. But you're not just blind in the natural, you're blind spiritually, short-sighted, seeing only what is near him and has become obvious to the fact that he was cleansed from his old sins. Verse 10 says, because of these, or because of this, brethren, be all the more solicitous and eager to make sure, to ratify, to strengthen, to make steadfast your calling and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble or fall. Thus, there will be richly and abundantly provided for you entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior. Verse 12 says, So I intend always to remind you about these things, although indeed you know them and are firm in the truth that you now hold. So God is looking for a people that would operate in the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. The essence of true knowledge for believers we talked about is in found in 1 Peter. The false teachers and their doom, that's what's happening you find in the world today. If you look in chapter 2 and in chapter 3, it's a warning, judgment, and exhortation. So as we close, we want to pray. Praise be to God for truth, the truth of knowledge for the believers. And if you go back and read, because we flew through this, but I just introduced this to you so you can go back and read it. You go back to 2 Peter and you read the first chapter and we'll talk about the true knowledge of the believer, the essence of true knowledge for a believer. You can find that over in first, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. And then as you read in, in, in chapter 2, and we kind of like flew through uh, chapter 2, verse 1 to 22, it says false teachers and their doom. Oh, yes, it's a lot of false teaching going around, but they're doomed for destruction in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So lastly, there's a warning, judgment, and exhortation that will take place. So we just pray that if you're not saved, if you haven't given your heart over to Jesus Christ, we pray that you would go back and meditate on God's word. We pray that you would go back and read the things that God has spoken to our hearts. Amen. Because God is soon to come and we need to be ready. A lot of people have gone astray. A lot of people have, have quit and given up and, and just don't understand.